Uh, we uh, were just starting the municipal wastewater uh, oh, sorry. environment for combust flow and treat products. It's going to be a busy morning this morning. Uh, we have a lot to cover. And here's an outline. We're going to start with an overview in markets. And to crystallize that into a few sentences, the municipal wastewater treatment market around the world is going through a sea change and new, needs a new navigation uh, course. And the reason is that the automation, the industrial internet of things and remote monitoring is centralizing decision-making so that the uh, Suez in France can be viewing the performance of components in each of the plants uh, around the world. And NALCO at, a, at their monitoring center in Naperville, Illinois, can be advising relative to treatment chemical additions uh, at plants all over the world. The other aspect is that there is an increasing concentration of companies. So not only is the decision making being centralized, but there are fewer companies making the decisions. So Jacobs bought CH2M Hill, and so you have a, a large design firm that is also operating plants, and so a large portion of the market and the decisions are are now made by that one company. So we'll go into a lot of that. Then the big challenge for combust flow and treat companies is how to approach this automation and remote monitoring. And so we're going to go through a number of examples of how companies with specific products are dealing with various different vendors from the instrumentation and, and telemetry to the process management software. Relative to the concentration, we're going to show the concentration uh, of decision making in Chile with only a few companies participating. And then we're going to take a whole new slide deck. What we wanted to do was to do a very deep dive on one very large, uh, very fast growing Chinese uh, operator of, of wastewater uh, treatment plants. And then we're going to briefly look at several of our uh, websites. One is our uh, municipal wastewater decisions and the framework under which a lot of these decisions are going to be made, we believe will involve the in industrial internet of wisdom, which will empower IIoT. And a very fundamental part of that is organized decision systems that interconnect people and knowledge. The other website that we're going to look at is the municipal wastewater plants, people, and profiles. And essentially, this is part of the whole sea change, and it's part of a five step program that allows the product uh, supplier to deal directly with all the large purchasers uh, around the world in a direct manner rather than through uh, distributors or sales representatives and to be talking at a very high level and be communicating what we have uh, labeled as the total cost of ownership validation and to explain that, if you have a centralized uh, monitoring system, you're getting continuous total cost of ownership evaluations uh, uh, at uh, each of these remote centers on each of the products. And therefore, the vendor, in order to make any, uh, to persuade a customer to change his ways, is going to need a much more sophisticated uh, way to validate the uh, ability of his product to provide a lower total cost of, of ownership. So let's get into it and start with the overview. The municipal wastewater IIoT market 
is going to be pretty large. And the by 2026, we see a, a traditional route to market for combust flow and treat companies of 35 million. Uh, a new route to market because there'll be third parties making a lot of these decisions that is the equivalent of eight, of eight billion and new smart revenues of eight billion. So the uh, the total impact on the market will be uh, sixteen billion dollars. There are a number of companies that are jockeying uh, for a position in the market. People like Suez buying GE. Uh, and then a lot of the suppliers like Xylem that are moving forward aggressively with purchasing IIoT type companies. So the number of the uh, developments are already uh, significant. Uh, people like Nelco are already uh, uh, providing a lot of their expertise and advice through their remote control center, whereas historically it was a salesperson calling continually on the plants that was the main way that information was communicated. The uh, wastewater IIoT uh, revenues is going to not surprisingly be uh, slanted toward East Asia where the market will be growing from a, a present uh, size of 7 billion to over uh, 27 billion by uh, 2030. As we said in the introduction, there are a few hundred companies that will be making uh, a large portion of the decisions. So we broke this out with uh, the various different uh, combust flow and treat components, which are guide, control, measure, valves, filtration pumps, etc. And uh, the uh, the market this year for all those uh, components is 63 billion, of which uh, 13 billion is in the U.S. But Suez alone will account for uh, 1.2 billion. Jacobs CH2M 765 million. Uh, BWIG BWG, which we will be going through in more depth here. Uh, almost 400 million uh, of this equipment. And then you have your large uh, municip private municipal, not private, but city municipalities in the US, such as uh, Los Angeles and Chicago, MSD, but they really don't compare to uh, many of the international uh, organizations where they're not organized around one city. They're often privatized. Uh, operations for a good portion of the country, such as Mexico or Chile. There are a lot of forecasts out there of the combust flow and treat market for uh, municipalities. The, however, that a, a slightly different approach comes up, we believe, with some more accurate uh, forecasts. And so what we have done is start with the installed treatment capacities in future years and present years. The difference in installed capacity from one year to the next equals new builds, less retirements. Pumps, valves, nozzles, blowers, and similar components need to be replaced every 10 to 15 years. So unless the growth rate for new builds is higher than 6% per year, for components that are replaced every 15 years or 10% a year for those that are, are replaced every 10 years, the replacement market will be larger than the new market. In a high growth country such as India, the new build expenditure will be far greater than the replacement, but the total investment will still be small compared to a country such as the US with a 35,000 MGD of installed capacity. So you read a lot of uh, figures that uh, that focused on new system designs and they give you a false impression that some of these growth 
countries like India are where the big market is. But if you're actually furnishing pumps, compressors, valves, et cetera, uh, it's the big, big uh, existing markets where the potential is greatest. It's possibly to greatly improve the accuracy of market forecasts by obtaining accurate flow flows for um, for each uh, of the uh, countries and then relating the investment for each component as a function of the flow rate. So you really need to look at incremental new systems, new systems which replace retired systems, replacement components, repair and service of existing components, all of which are, are derived from the MGD type numbers. Over the life of the average pump blower or high performance valve, the cost of repair will exceed the original cost. So these represent very large markets for component suppliers at existing plants. The movement to IIoT and remote O&M adds the potential to expand the service and advisory opportunity and to negotiate yearly contracts, which even can be fixed in price or on a partnership basis where the owner and supplier share the savings. And many such examples have shown that the product supplier makes a much higher profit with this approach, even though he is taking somewhat more risk. So the sea change in the market can be navigated with a five-step program which uh, is on our website, but we're not going to be discussing today. A key part of all this will be the total cost of ownership uh, analyses. And again, we have an LTCOV uh, program, but again, we're not going to be discussing that today. I was alluding to our uh, analyses of uh, uh, the uh, activity in municipal wastewater treatment measured in millions of gallons a day in every country of the world. And there's many, many statistics out there, but uh, there are too many variables between number of people served and primary treatment, secondary treatment, sewage transport, all these different things. And essentially, um, uh, we've been working you know, 20 years or so to try to hone uh, the uh, statistical approach here to make sure that we have accurate MGD uh, numbers for new and, and future uh, capacities in these various countries. There are some interesting aspects uh, based on electricity rates. Countries with lower GDP and the tendency to buy on initial cost are also the countries with some of the highest electricity prices. So these are offsetting factors. Countries with lower GDP are countries with higher percentages of plants operated by third parties. So there are a number of things that we're citing here that would impact uh, the market for more efficient uh, components in any one of these countries. But what we would, but the summary here are conclusion would be that there's a huge difference in electricity costs uh, between, say, the U.S. and some of the high-cost uh, high countries uh, as much as three, three to one or more. So the, uh, where it makes sense to uh, barely uh, justify a more efficient approach in one country, it's three times more effective, uh, cost effective to do so in these high, high cost countries. Let's get into some examples here. The, uh, a number of the valve and pump companies uh, have a number of divisions which can uh, participate and collaborate with one another. Here, here for instance, is IDEX, which has the pump and uh, uh, valve uh, companies, but uh, also has uh, ADS, uh, which is a relatively new uh, acquisition. And this is not you know, unusual where you have uh, uh, software companies in 
automation companies being added to the valve pump and other component companies. So this is an example of what ADS is doing with their uh, flow monitors uh, at a particular uh, wastewater plant. This is actually, uh, we took this right out of their guarantee for the wastewater plant. And they have a number of, um, of ways that they're guaranteeing the reliab continuing reliability and maintenance of the um, monitoring systems for that plant and uh, the data processing services that they offer. And so for a company like IDEX, which has a number of products which can be incorporated into automated and remotely controlled operations, there is a big potential adding the pumps and valves and integrating them into a process management package is the ideal uh, next step. And it can be accomplished with partners uh, and with the uh, with a complete system in place, uh, you have a very cost effective uh, support for the plant. So Crane is another uh, example and they have just recently purchased uh, Westlock, who also has uh, position transmitters and other solutions for networking, monitoring, and controlling uh, process valves. And so the, um, uh, a number of these products will fit in well as Crane moves into the uh, industrial internet of uh, things with all their products. There are lots of uh, examples of the sensors uh, improving the operations uh, and allowing the automation of many of the plants around the world. Here's I IoT sense, uh, ultrasound sensors in a uh, wastewater treatment plant in Spain. Like Nalco, Carita uh, remotely monitors water treatment systems uh, remotely and can uh, help optimize the chemicals in injected in response to changes in water quality needs. Uh, Sensophone uh, monitors the conditions at remote pump stations. There are a number of uh, automation and um, controls companies that can help support the component companies. And for instance, Eaton has expanded remote monitoring and control solutions for water and wastewater plants and provides a, a fairly comprehensive package. So here's a case where you have uh, the need for battery powered nodes in uh, sequence and uh, with the spacing of the uh, battery nodes appropriately, uh, you can get reliable uh, uh, transmission. So there are a number of uh, wastewater opportunities, not only in uh, the treatment plants, but obviously in the uh, lift stations and then stormwater uh, management as well. Some of the players are people like IBM, uh, which uh, is uh, chronicled here with uh, optimizing the uh, wastewater plant, one of the Spanish wastewater treatment plants. Again, the wireless uh, networks that uh, we've been talking about here. Here's a company called Freewave that uh, is involved in it. And Advant Advantech is another uh, smart sensing company. And uh, you can deal, and we are in a, we have a um, municipal wastewater treatment systems where we're coming up with a lot of these case histories where we see how, for instance, uh, a Connecticut wastewater treatment plant uh, at Stanford is uh, upgrading its controls and making uh, big improvements in the, in the plant. And uh, so this is a tendency, I think, that is uh, uh, going on at many of the wastewater plants, not only in the United States, but certainly around the world. And so they're, you know, using Emerson, Rosemont, and a number of the other uh, instrumentation companies that uh, are used in, frequently in the industry. So here's another uh, um, application with uh, DTSI implementing IT solutions. We won't 
get into that as well. Pumping is a particular uh, opportunity f where you can have what we would call edge computing, where you have someone like Xylem that provides a, a cloud-based SCADA system for wastewater pumps. And if there's total process management software for the utility, you have uh, uh, the amount of information being condensed and, and made much more uh, effective if it comes from the edge computer uh, system from someone like Xylem that has all this world pump experience. And this is a little bit more information on, uh, on this type of a system from Xylem and their flight uh, subsidiary. And so they, they have the additional advantage Xylem does of being able to offer most of the components. So all the system components of ways to uh, separate uh, the solids and biological treatment and so forth are uh, part of what Xylem has to offer. And continuous DO monitoring uh, not only is, uh, is, is a very effective way of being able to reduce the uh, energy requirements because you can reduce the amount of oxygen required to get the maximum uh, oxidation or the maximum uh, biological uh, uh, oxygen to, to the microbes. So the obviously, as Emerson points out, the performance of the sensors is key. And so you need self-cleaning designs and other uh, options. Pet Air is another example of somebody who does have a control uh, system. And uh, one of the interesting developments is even at the smaller plants, something as simple as an alarm system can uh, avoid the necessity, necessity of having a night watchman uh, because he isn't going to be able to make any changes anyway. And if when a problem occurs, the right person is uh, no notified, uh, the problem is going to get fixed sooner than even having a, a watchman at the site. The, uh, these edge computer systems uh, can also be applied to the clarifiers, as shown in this uh, gray matter system uh, treatise here. Motorola is another uh, company that provides uh, solutions with SCADA and, and other uh, uh, software that they uh, provide. And they tout the improvements that can be made uh, in pump performance and also uh, in maintenance reduction. And uh, we've, we've gone over the Motorola. and. Here's another optimization system by IBM. Uh, another example by uh, from Tibo, T-I-B-B-O. And then uh, one area that <clears throat> it also needs some attention is the monitoring of uh, air toxics and pollutants uh, in and around the wastewater plant. Certainly, odors are probably the biggest challenge that wastewater plants have. And by the way, we'll be showing an underground plant here in uh, Malaysia in a few minutes where that ceases to be a problem. But um, the uh, monitoring of all these different things is, is uh, a critical in uh, an above ground plant. And Sierra monitoring, for instance, does have uh, technology to monitor all these uh, toxic and uh, odorous pollutants, and, and to do so at each one of these different uh, process points. And so they can marry the sensors with IIoT functions. The aerator companies are also moving forward uh, with all this. And so uh, Kaiser has, uh, Kaiser has uh, real time monitoring of various different uh, uh, sensors. And, uh, Gardner Denver also has a remote O&M. And what I might point out here is they talk not only about the, um, the remote O&M where you can uh, uh, make sure that 
uh, emergencies are uh, documented and and resolved quickly. But educated decisions can be made on a number of different things uh, with the use of subject matter uh, experts that Gardner Denver uh, would make available. But what we're saying here, and we won't get a chance to get into it much today, is that the subject matter expert uh, is going to need in the future to be even much more expert because of all the data analytics that's out there. And unless he has a decision system which is available to him, to him uh, he is going to be out uh, manned by just the people who are able to cultivate and analyze all the data that is being generated. And the best way to do this is through uh, organized decision systems. And so we're saying there's going to be a whole new breed of subject matter experts, which we call subject matter ultra experts. And they are utilizing decision systems to make them more expert. At the beginning, we said how the um, world of municipal wastewater is being concentrated. Chile is a good example because only a few <clears throat> companies are involved in the entire water wastewater structure in Chile. Uh, water, wastewater is reused and therefore both water and wastewater operations are conducted as one. So a limited number of companies are, are involved. Suez is a big player uh, with about 50% of the total. So they've gone farther than any other uh, country of the world in commodifying water. And of course, the agricultural sector is, is, needs this as well. So the, uh, the bottom line for Suez with 50% of the plant operations in uh, Chile is uh, digital technology. So they have a monitoring center uh, in northern France and uh, can monitor uh, all the uh, information throughout all these plants uh, around the, the world and guarantees the uh, performance of all these plants. But um, Suez has about 50% of the uh, market in Chile and Ontario teachers, Marabini, and a couple others are uh, minor players, but they're rounding out with most of the uh, wastewater treatment operations in the country. And the, uh, again, the, the consolidation of a lot of these original uh, privatized companies, this Aguas Andinas is the uh, Suez company. But uh, what I might point out here is that um, Degramont is also a part of Suez, and they actually are building a lot of these plants. Uh, Suez has just purchased uh, GE Water, which has a lot of the components that uh, complement uh, Degramont. Degramont, and um, and in addition to that, they are one of the world's largest suppliers of treatment chemicals, having uh, acquired the old Betts company. So all this is a part of. Uh, Suez now and allows them to uh, provide all the equipment initially to build on and operate the plants, to provide all the repair parts for the major equipment and even the treatment uh, chemicals. The, in terms of dealing with all these people, the, the, there's a, a huge change in the way people want to be accessed and are being accessed. And when you look on LinkedIn, you see that for virtually everybody that you want to talk to, there's a whole LinkedIn profile and uh, an easy way to, to uh, start contacts. So again, it's, whole, it's all part of this uh, sea change that we are talking about. Here are a few more examples of the contacts uh, at the, at the uh, Suez type plants or own plants. And uh, here's a little bit of information on Mira Benny and what they're, what they're doing. And, and again, uh, uh, we're also showing that in a lot of these places, you would have consultants that uh, are important as well. 
And uh, so, so at MWH, you have a country manager, uh, for instance, uh, who would be a, an important uh, a person. <clears throat> a few more examples of the uh, contacts that uh, are available. And so this really ends then this first uh, slide deck that we're talking about here. And so we're going to move on then uh, to um, get this out of the way a little bit so I can get this eliminated here and then go on to the example of BEWG. And let's see here. We want to uh, expand this uh, uh, slideshow here. So we'll start from the beginning. And BWG is the largest water and wastewater utility company in China and has grown very rapidly. It's covering a very large portion of China and it has concession agreements uh, for 544 water plants, including 423 sewage treatment plants, 110 water distribution plants. 10 reclaimed water treatment plants, and one seawater desalination plant. So new project uh, uh, activity that they're also involved in designing and building these plants is a substantial almost uh, 3 million tons per day in the last year or so. And But the bottom line is, as, uh, as of June 30th, 2017, the daily design capacity that they're operating is nearly 30 million tons, which is about 7,000 MGD. And compared to, you know, in the United States, we have about 40,000 MGD of, of water and 40,000 MGD of wastewater. So just this one operation becomes a very uh, large one compared to anything uh, in, in, in the United States. With a little bit of effort, it is possible to come up with all the information about these uh, plants, all these systems such as BEWG, in, in terms of uh, as, a, as a company, how much they uh, will be using combust flow and treat based on their revenues and the MGD that they're operating and the balance between their uh, operating systems, their construction, and then their service. And of course, even on the water distribution side, there are opportunities as, as well. So here are the tons per day, which are easily converted into MGD. Uh, and they are operating in a number of different countries now, as we'll see. And the uh, mainland China, western China, and you can see in, in southern China and eastern China, uh, but there's a pretty good balance as to where their plants are, are uh, located. The um, company is profitable and growing rapidly. 61% of the revenue comes from construction of new plants and only 30% from treatment operations. I think it's very important, and we'll, we'll be establishing this in the next few slides, is that that BEWG is on the cutting edge of technology, and the knowledge is gravitating toward China, where there is this huge uh, opportunity for new plants and therefore new ways to improve uh, efficiency uh, that um, are even more cost effective because you're putting it in for, for the first time, you don't have to retrofit it. So it's very difficult for uh, other countries to compete with a country that's got uh, new opportunities uh, continually to improve the operations as they put in these new plants. And so uh, they're in adopting intelligent aeration control at, at all their different plants. And so this is a huge uh, uh, opportunity for, for instance, people who make blowers 
you're talking about retrofitting uh, uh, 300 and some plants with new blowers. So that's uh, that's the equivalent of about the new U the U.S. blower market for a particular year. And so they have four research centers, and they're in that they're benefiting from uh, some government support in some of these things as uh, as well. So they have a you know pretty impressive staff, as you can see, with 57 master's degree uh, uh, scientists there uh, that are part of the organization as well. So again, we were talking about the rapid growth and their strategic direction, which is along the high tech, high green line, which we'll, we'll see a little bit more quickly. And their large uh, design capacity for the plants that they're running, not only in China, but in Malaysia, Singapore, and Portugal, uh, among others. And of course, the fact that they're getting into the desalination and uh, some of the details on their various different locations and their water distribution, their construction services, their build on transfer, uh, which is a very large portion of their total revenues. And some of the cutting edge technology they have, such as underground wastewater treatment plants. Uh, here is one in, uh, in, in uh, China that they have uh, installed. And here is a, another one in, uh, in S Singapore. They have a, a very large loan from the uh, Asian Development Bank, uh, 240 million, uh, to pursue water reuse at a number of plants. So they're, they're buying some existing water, uh, wastewater treatment plants and then investing in the water reuse technology to clean up that water. And uh, so this is a, a, a way to save water in China and also to improve the uh, cost effectiveness of uh, operations. So in, uh, uh, they're, they're, up, they're, they're in, tuned in with United uh, en Engineer for building this particular phase one plant uh, in Singapore. And then now let's move on to, to Malaysia. So they have a, a number of undertakings there in Malaysia, and we're gonna go into details of just uh, one of them here, which is the Pantai 2 uh, project. And it's pretty impressive. Um, here's the contract cost and the timing is just going into operation as we speak in the area in Malaysia that it covers. But um, it really has uh, uh, integrated itself right into the municipal area. As you can see here, um, it's, it's um, got football fields and basketball courts, volleyball courts and so forth, all above ground as well as parks. And, um, Underground, you have this very efficient uh, plant, which is providing effluent reuse, solar uh, panels, of course, from the uh, above ground part of the application, uh, wastewater, heat pumps. Uh, they bought a number of neur uh, neuros turbo blowers that are high efficiency for aeration. They're reusing biosolids, some of which is being uh, in the form of biogas, and uh, they're harvesting rainwater and other features. So these were some of the complexities of, of, of building all this, and you know what what it's looking like uh, at the present time with the plant under underneath. And here's a a, a link to the details of the blower purchases, which. Um, came from Neuros in South Korea. And rain, there's a, a number of different sizes of, of, of blowers that were uh, purchased. So they have uh, joint ventures in the um, seawater uh, reverse osmosis area as well. And that's documented there. 
And that kind of ends the um, the presentation relative to the uh, to BWG. Now we have uh, similar uh, coverage of others, and the uh, so I'm going to what I'm going to do at this point is to go on to our municipal wastewater uh, treatment plant um, decisions, uh, which again is part of uh, of a whole uh, of uh, it can be inc incorporated in, in our along with our plants and projects as well. But what we're doing here is trying to get a whole decision system where you can click on any particular subject. And when you click on that subject, then these different, these things, you know, appear like you can get into a whole deep, uh, go to a paper uh, by Kaiser or uh, Neuros or multi-stage centrifugals and why they're, why they're replaced. And what we're trying to do with a lot of these uh, uh, case histories is to go into what the consultant's thinking was and why he recommended some particular uh, combination of, uh, of products to optimize uh, the uh, efficiency. So these are the types of things that are, are included there. But uh, then we do have the various different specific decision systems, like we have one just on uh, mercury uh, uh, removal for sewage sludge incinerators, and another one uh, just on aeration blowers. So the uh, uh, here is a, an example then here of, of the one on aeration blowers, where uh, you know some of the uh, background and and why you, you need to consider various different blowers, the importance of energy efficiency, and the uh, nuances of uh, energy efficiency with a number of different types of blowers, each of which has uh, different costs, different efficiencies, different flow ranges. And, uh, and a lot of this is dependent, you know, on the um, fact that in many wastewater plants, the actual operating range most of the time is about half the needed range when you have uh, peak peak flows. And this creates uh, a big challenge for the aerator blower companies to be able to operate efficiently at, at 50% uh, load. And, and generally what that means is using several different blowers rather than than one. And so there's a lot of uh, nuances that compare the different uh, blowers and their uh, efficiencies at, their, at different uh, 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 ranges of, of uh, operation. And then, then we get into uh, what, are, what are all these options with pos positive to place, displacement blowers, who makes them multi-stage centrifugals, single stage centrifugals, the uh, high speed turbos, and um, and then you've got the uh, low, low, low speed, uh, uh, the, the screw conveyors as, uh, is, is another one as well here. So these are all the uh, options that are uh, available in the blowers. And then uh, the, some of the, uh, uh, the factors that have to be defined uh, are included here, and you know, some of the things that do impact the total operation are, are much more than just the blower itself in terms of the way it's driven and other other aspects. And then we try to, to establish with these case histories why certain types of blowers and approaches are better in, in a, a very specific case. And I think this is important that um, the, and this is why these decision systems are important, that that one size doesn't fit all, that what is good for one particular installation is not for another. And you've got weather, obviously, uh, when, when air is, is warm, the efficiency of the blower is less than when the air is cold. So it depends on where the plant is located. 
what kind of um, a- average flow rate versus total uh, peak flow rates and so forth. So all these all these things, uh, and then of course the systems that are installed itself. How are how are you actually? Uh, what kind of a biological process are you operating? And there are, is a wealth of information out there by the consulting companies that have spent, you know, months actually looking at all the options for a particular plant, giving all the cost uh, information. So it is a big opportunity just to study all this and to uh, come up with some pretty reliable conclusions about what it costs to put in a particular product and which uh, way might be best for a particular uh, plant. So again, this hot weather is another uh, factor and things there too. So this is a, uh, and then blower controls is very important here as we were talking about, and we do think this opportunity for the blower companies to take it to the next level. And uh, Siemens now is part of uh, uh, this particular division of Siemens is now uh, with the turbo blowers is now part of Howden. And so you have uh, uh, the Howden ability now with their air biocontrol automation s- solutions to control the DO flow uh, appropriately with multiple blowers and as you can see over here you know getting the even uh, distribution of of dissolved ox- of, of oxygen to each uh, uh, each of these pipe uh, lengths and entry points here uh, becomes uh, uh, critical and uh, so the uh, the opportunity here for say a blower manufacturer is to triple or quadruple your revenues because you can remotely uh, monitor and you can even uh, guarantee uh, service and replacement if you're the one that's monitoring the uh, operations on a continuous basis. So you can uh, include a holistic uh, approach uh, here and which includes uh, obviously the drives and the other other factors as uh, as well. So that I think is a good example of the um, of this uh, aeration decisions. So we'll uh, basically move on here to the uh, uh, to our subscriber services, and I uh, let's see, we're going to close close these tabs, and um, we'll go on to our uh, website here. And before I move on to this uh, municipal wastewater uh, plants and, and profiles, I'd like to point out that we do have uh, this business uh, program, which is a five-step program for navigating the uh, new and challenging uh, uh, sea change uh, in this uh, industry. And it's supported uh, we have market studies for each one of the components here, and it does give you estimates of how much they're, how much, for instance, the wastewater, each waste, major wastewater plant will buy of whether it's scrubbers or pumps or valves or whatever. But uh, then we also, uh, from completing the uh, five-step program, you can then go into the the details of plants and and uh, and projects for uh, you know, for any of these different industries, including uh, wastewater uh, treatment plants. And again, we have profiles of Chicago, MSND, and, and Jacobs, and people like that. But then you can actually go into uh, searching uh, plants as well. So, for instance, if you go into the A section. Uh, you can uh, see see it that way. Another way I think is informing us to go in by states. So again, we can go into Alabama by state. We can hit submit, and then we can view by flow rate. And so, uh, 
the largest uh, uh, plant is uh, 85 uh, MGD plant. And you click on that and you get uh, all sorts of information about that plant, various different articles, contacts, so forth that are going on for the, the various different types of equipment that are installed at that plant. And what we're saying is that if you already know approximately how much of what types of equipment this plant is going to be buying over the next few years, you know who the consulting engineer that's working on it's going to be, that uh, you have a whole new way to approach the market, which is <clears throat> to target uh, the, the large uh, purchasers and uh, to do so a year or more ahead of time. And so if you're selling any kind of a high performance product, you're going to be much more effective, I, we believe, in this type of approach than waiting till you get a sales lead. And, uh, and of course, the worst of all worlds is, is all these uncoordinated sa coordinated sales leads that uh, uh, provide no, no structure and no opportunity really to make a case that you do have the lowest total cost uh, uh, of ownership rather than just the, the lowest price. So this is a, uh, uh, I think a summary of where we believe the wastewater, municipal wastewater uh, treatment industry uh, is going on a worldwide basis. One last point I might want to make is the U.S. is a small portion of the total, and many of the players that are even important in the U.S. are uh, offshore-based, and certainly many of the U.S. players are internationally focused at this point. So there is no U.S. market per se. Uh, there is a, a world market. And with that, I'd like to thank you for spending some time this morning. We look forward to uh, having you join us for coal-fired boilers and gas turbines and some of the other webinars that we do have coming up in the next uh, few months. And we certainly welcome any questions. And uh, this is Bob McElvain signing off for today. <laughs>